Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello, and welcome to the Pop Turnative podcast here on a nice Monday afternoon, and uh, today we are going to talk uh, MMA, we're going to talk social media, and I'm really happy with the panel we have. We're first going to introduce our first MMA fighter on the show. We have Elias the Spartan Theodoro is with us. Elias, welcome to the show. Good to be here. And we have an MMA journalist, does some work for Sportsnet, but also hosts a really cool show um, called the uh, MMA Oddsbreaker, I believe, is that what it is? Uh, it's the parting shot on MMA Oddsbreaker, but close. It, it was good. I appreciate Parting that. shot. Appreciate yeah. J- James Lynch is with us. James, welcome to Alternative. Hey, appreciate it. Big fan of the show. So glad to be on. No problem. Right off the bat, talk a little bit about the show, MMA Oddbreaker. Talk a little bit about it. I'm a big fan of it. Where can we watch it? And how did it get started? Uh, YouTube.com slash Lynch on Sports. You can also check it out on MMAOddsbreaker.com, like you mentioned there. It's basically a show where I talk to fighters. Elias knows. I've, he's one of the guys I've interviewed a number of times. And basically, I just I talk to people from all over the fight scene, not just UFC fighters, regional fighters, Canadian fighters. Uh, I think there's a niche out there, and that niche is you know regional MMA. It's not getting enough coverage. And so I saw that niche, and I also see a lot of people doing podcasts. I think podcasts are, you know, they're great, but it's, it's, a, it's a crowded market. So I do yeah. video. I do video interviews, and it's been pretty successful just with the fact that, you know, we're getting these fighters more exposure out there and, you know, sort of getting their names out there. And it's been great. I love it. I love talking to fighters. And, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So I definitely enjoy doing it. Great. Well, we're happy to have you on. And uh, Elias, big, uh, big week coming up Sunday, UFC Halifax, big fight. How has it been uh, getting ready for that fight? And we know we see you're very active on social media. I'm mm-hmm. um, always uh, in- engaging with fans and you know other MMA personalities. Talk a little bit about what you think about social media and how MMA fighters are or aren't using it. Um, well, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, obviously, I'm feeling great. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's my week. Uh, this isn't my first rodeo. Uh, feeling good. Feeling uh, ready to destroy. Uh, this will be... Uh, the third time I fight in uh, Halifax, and I'm going for 3-0. and And I've already beaten uh, my opponent's uh, actual training partner, Bruno Santos, and I plan to beat him and completely uh, take on and defeat MMA Masters, where they both are from. Uh, in regards to social media, it's the way of the future. Uh, it allows you to connect your, your fans, uh, potential fans, and basically input anything you want in regards to... Uh, What's going on in the world? Uh, specifically, Twitter. Uh, I think in many ways it's become it's, it's it's in many ways an online conversation. So it allows you to, like I said, connect and build a grassroots thing. And I think that's what I've been very successful at. Great. And James, being on the other side, being a journalist, going and covering all these events, you know, it's really cool to have the different perspectives. Elias is, you know, fighting, but you're all, you're covering it. So what do you see from all that perspective? You know, um, we, we heard what Elias uh, has to say about it, and he's actually fighting, but someone from the other side of it. Oh, Twitter's huge. I mean, I I wouldn't have certain jobs that I have now if it wasn't for Twitter. Uh, the cool thing about the UFC and, and MMA in general is all these fighters have Twitter accounts, and it's sort of the way you can connect with them, you can interact with them, you can book interviews with them too. I've done you know that plenty of times where I've gone through a manager, you know, through Twitter or you know getting in touch with them and everything else. So it's a, it's it's a powerful tool that I think is not as uh, popular in other sports in regards to connecting people because you know we see all these other sports they're mainstream they have all this exposure but really mma sort of still kind of a hardcore sport and uh you need something like twitter to be able to connect your fans and i think it's uh it's been very good for me i know that and it's it's been great i'm sure for the fighters too to kind of get their name out there promote what they want to promote and and do it not at the cost of someone else and this is something that you could both uh, touch on but and it, it doesn't even have to be solely focused for MMA fighters. But why do you think, you know, from your perspective, Elias, um, as an MMA fighter, why people are so – because there's many reasons why people like athletes are reluctant to use social media. But, like, on top of your head, what are some of the reasons why you're seeing, you know, a lot of people being more passive social media users, like using social media but not actually posting – as much content because you're very active on social media you're posting a lot what do you think about um especially like me in the hockey world a lot of them you know they're on social media but they just won't post anything they won't retweet 
Well, uh, it's basically, it has to do with the fact that we are much more accessible starting off uh, in the lower, the regional, uh, I guess, circuit. Uh, in many ways, our fans, uh, friends, it, it's all a very local thing. So um, I think it's, it, in many ways, it's the reality that a hockey player makes $7 million a year. He doesn't give two shits about uh, uh, connecting because he gets a paycheck anyways. And this way, we are in many ways um responsible for our actual involvement in regards to building that fan base uh i think many ways you see the people that are in some ways the more top earners in our sport uh, has been out of a necessity to connect and you know i have friends in different social media aspects who you know have about five six thousand uh you know dedicated followers on let's say their YouTube channel that buy everything they want and they make the half a million dollars a year. That's in many ways a opportunity to kind of take away from the old guard that was the NBC, the ABC, the CBC, uh, well even CBC or whatever if you want to talk about a very Canadian aspect and control your actual medium. Um, it's a way to take a niche market. Mixed martial arts is already is um, one of those and it allows you to dominate it. I, uh, I've been very successful at building this through constant live um, events, which would be the UFC events, and it allowed me to build the platform that I have today. I have also have a high engagement in regards to Instagram and whatnot. And uh, after my fight, I have a lot more planned stuff. Obviously, I got to kick ass, which I plan on doing February 19th, this Sunday. And uh, yeah. Hashtag UFC Halifax. And uh, James, uh, you can relate, I'm, I'm sure, except for the aspect of actually getting in there and fighting, <laughs> but you can relate yeah. to a lot of what uh, Elias just said. Yeah, and and, people, and if fighters are out here watching or any other athletes, uh, Elias is the catalyst for how you want to market yourself. Uh, you know, Pete, you and I talked about this off air about the Reebok deal with the UFC. Um, it's tough to get sponsors, but Elias is someone who's done a very good job of creating contacts outside the cage. I mean, this is a guy who was on Amazing Race Canada. That's not something that would happen if he wasn't as active, I don't think, on social media or had good representation. So Elias is sort of the type of person you'd want to look at as far as getting these deals. It's, it's tougher now, as Elias knows, you know, with the Reebok deal where you can't just have sponsors, you know, you know, relying on you competing on TV and wearing their logo. Now you have to do that extra work outside the cage. And I think with Twitter and everything like that, there is a good opportunity to sort of market yourself and, uh, you know, build your brand outside the cage because that's the most important thing. Yeah, and that's, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. And, and speaking of that, too, you recently announced your um, partnership last with uh, Per Plus, correct? This is true. And, um, yeah. I'm currently the, um, the U.S. ambassador and actually already in talks with uh, Canada and Australia to become a world ambassador. So it's a uh, it's a big announcement and it's gonna get bigger. Yeah, continue. Yeah, no. So it's uh it's a uh, really cool thing now you're doing and and uh, you said it's gonna expand and get bigger. Um, what are you able to tell us about it? Well, again, it's the initial um, activation. Uh, we already we already signed on for uh, six months and it looks like they've again they've already told us essentially that they want a year um, and it's just gonna grow from there. Um, the obvious uh, tie-ins being Canadian, uh, so the Canadian market makes perfect sense. Then I also want Canada versus Australia, and because I am also very, uh, you know, cognitive of the actual further aspects of it. Uh, not only did I win Canada versus Australia, but also Melbourne has the third largest Greek population, and I am Greek. So am I. Boom. So I was also gonna I was gonna say something about James, but we were short on time of him. But I was gonna be like, how, how does it feel to be the the only non Greek on this panel? But Greek sandwich. Yeah, yeah they, 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 there's your answer. He ran away. <laughs> but uh, no, it's really cool to you know uh, have um, you know guys like you and athletes and and MMA fighters, you know, to get your perspective. You know, we've had a few wrestlers on the show as well, and uh, a couple of questions that. Uh, really similar to, to, to I asked. I had Maria Canellas Bennett, another Greek. I had her on, on the show. She was on WWE, and she's on Impact Wrestling now. And, you know, it's a bit different because they're acting. They're playing characters, right? But I'm sure is the Elias, Elias Theodoru that we see in the ring or right before um, in, in the cage, right before fights, is that the same of what we're going to see kind of like on episodes of Pop Turnitin like this? Or are you kind of the same person, just maybe well, different focus. Yep. Well, I, I think in many ways, uh, again, your public persona is just you kind of multitude. Um, in, in many ways, you just kind of turn on the dial. 
Uh, fun fact, I also didn't make my pro wrestling debut a year ago. Uh, wow. More of that. Uh, actually, my name is Grease Lighten, spelled as G-R-E-C-E. <laughs> I wore a all uh, white spandex with a little Greek flag on the back, and my finishing <laughs> and my finishing move was a comb Superman punch. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Again, there's many levels to it. Uh, there's many <laughs> levels to this game, um, and I think uh, all press is good press in many regards to a certain extent. Um, I think um, I, I want to evolve uh, and branch out in many ways. I have actually two TV shows and a movie that are uh, in the works. Mm-hmm. Right after the after my fight and after I smash my opponent. I uh, will be announcing more on my actual movie. Um, it, it will actually be called Street Fighters. I play an MMA fighter, huge stretch, who gets in, injured. But the important thing to kind of, die, and the, the bigger actual thing in regards to it, would be um, I actually finding oneself after injury. And uh, I will not, basically, without giving away too much of the, 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 the actual film, it will be a comedy where I injure myself and I have to find a life outside of uh, fighting, and I find that through a new avatar uh, via competitive video game, a la Street Fighter. Yeah. And if all goes well, it looks like we're going to be partnering up with Capcom. And wow. um, again, I'm actually executive producer of it. Um, I'm going to be owning a certain percentage of it. Uh, same thing with the TV shows. Uh, I am executive producer, own 20 plus percentage of each. And again, it's controlling uh, your content, controlling your narrative, and controlling what uh projects you're moving forward i'm very excited i already have for the tv show i already have two networks that have essentially offered uh and uh, just kind of delving into that uh the, the, they're more or less uh one would say medium-sized networks uh specific to let's say a certain area uh if we're going to bring up an example of uh, T- uh sorry not tsn um rather uh australia again something like that would be let's say if there was a network in australia they're interested. They are only set in Australia, so they they offer sixty percent of let's say the budget, and then both Canadian and uh, Australian tax credits apply. And there you got eighty percent of your actual let's say four million dollar project, and an angel investor will top it up uh, uh, um, as long as they get uh, their fair share or their share first. And, and the way that kind of works out um, afterwards, essentially, it's a three month uh, window. So they'll want it for three months and be able to broadcast it first. And then you can take it and sell it, let's say, to another market, uh, Canada or uh, Britain or uh, Europe or Russia. And you can sell it for pennies of the dollar. If it costs, let's let's say, $4 million and you sell it for um, a million and I own 25%, 30%, boom. Yeah, Um, no, absolutely. um, And again, it's just a numbers game. Uh, And... I know what many people, maybe like possible detractors of that, would say. Um, it looks like I'm, I'm, I'm too, you know, scattered, too, um, uh, too much on my plate outside of MMA. But I disagree. There's 24 hours in the day, and you only really need to be an MMA fighter for four of those hours. I, yep. I still, I still train twice a day. I uh, have 11 sessions, and I'm still ready to win and be victorious once again in Halifax. Yeah, you're building the brand. You're building the Spartan brand, man. That's that, that's what it is. And you actually, uh, you've been an analyst on TSN a few few times. I saw a couple of uh, little clips of Derek Taylor. And uh, do you want to do that too down the road after, like, what, what once you maybe stop fighting? Do you like that kind of the analyst kind of media commentary stuff? Because you, you're pretty For good, sure. man. You were good. Thank you. Thank you very much. And again, uh, it's one of those things. The ten thousand hour mark where I just need to put um, more time into it. I'm also the cage side commentary, uh, one half of the cage side commentary for Hard Knocks, uh, Hard Knocks Fighting uh, Championships. So there's another aspect. Uh, I will. Ha- I actually did my last uh, uh, role for Hard Knocks for Hard Knocks 53, and I will be doing Hard Knocks 52 in May, So or March rather, uh, and then again in May. So again, there are 24 hours in a day. Uh, I think I'm very capable and not one track minded. I have no slight against other mixed martial artists that mixed martial artists that need to be, you know, uh, mixed martial artists all the time. I just yeah. think my, in many ways, like I said, there's 24 hours in the day, and um, I think you can be more than uh, one a one trick pony. And uh, it's also setting up, like you said, that brand, that ten point, a ten year uh, model. I I don't want to get hit in the head forever, and everyone wants to be a champion. But not everyone is. So I'm slowly 
building my threshold. And let's be real. I'm actually, that's why I have, let's say, a, uh, a slower um, pace in regards to fight activity. I'm only yeah. going to probably fight two, maybe three times this year. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to pull a Cerrone because, again, I have a TV show that after I, uh, after I beat Cesar Ferreira, I'm going to run off to L.A. and hopefully sell it and possibly sell it to a even bigger actual game changing uh, game changing um, networks that are very interested in the project. And, you know, one of the things that happens with it, they also want to add their little, you know, finger in the pie and maybe change it a little bit. But with the right idea, it looks like I well, to kind of not I can't really talk about the, the said the actual uh, network. Yeah, it's fine. Man. But but the, the I have five very big networks very huge networks that if done uh, is a huge, like, huge first in regards to mixed martial arts. No, that, that'd be great. Now, Elias, it is Monday and you know, a big Monday. hashtag on uh, Monday is hashtag Monday motivation. Um, mm-hmm. So you, you explained, you know, you're an MMA fighter, but you're doing all like a lot of other stuff and you're, you know, um, for a lot of people too, a lot of people want to do, want to be able to have, you know, um, a lot of projects and then kind of do their, you know, um, specific day job or, you know, their nine to five and they come home. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for people, um, who, whether they want to be an athlete, whether they want to, you know, work in social media from your perspective and your experience, what, what, um, advice do you have to them and what motivation can you give them about kind of, you know, um, not being afraid and kind of going forward and getting it done. And from your perspective, what does the Spartan have to say about that? Uh, well, basically, just starting is the first step. Uh, same thing, I would look at it, uh, bringing it up my actual MMA career. I only started after my first year of university. I have no karate background. I have no wrestling when I was high school. I didn't do jujitsu when I was a kid. I just showed up and uh, uh, taking on the idea of the 10,000 hour aspect in regards to mastering anything. Uh, the first step is always just showing up. And I think, uh, obviously, with my career as a mixed martial artist, it shows that um, it's also time put in. Um, it's how bad do you really want it? And I think uh, I've shown over my career that I want it pretty damn bad. And that doesn't own, that's not only limited to my mixed martial arts career, it's uh, the marketing, it's the strategy. Um, obviously, I'm a little, uh, I guess, um, more adapt than most in the sense that I, that's what I went to school for. I have an advertising degree. Oh, great. Um, so, so there is a method to my madness. Um, so with that being said, play with it. Have fun and find, especially if you're going to look at social media, start attaching yourself to a live event. I'm very lucky, obviously, with the UFC. Uh, they have events every weekend or if not more. So uh, there's there's an opportunity to constantly bombard and attach yourself to a market, and that is mixed martial arts. And obviously, again, I start with a little a little bit of uh, a leg up being a UFC fighter. There's, there's actual validity to my name. There's... Uh, people that want to follow it, but again, you build it and they will come. Absolutely, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up soon. But uh, I, I gotta say, someone on Twitter actually tweeted something out that I'm gonna read right now uh, when I announced that you were gonna be on the show. Um, it has to do with hashtag UFC Halifax, and I'm just gonna pull it up over here. Essentially, someone wants to get uh, a donair review uh, in Halifax because you know how the Halifax. They go nuts for their donors. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, Amy Langdon. She wanted to uh, get a donor review of the King of Donaires before after uh, your fight. <laughs> well, definitely not before because, obviously, I have a weight cut whole thing, a whole weight cut thing to deal with. Uh, but uh, I will definitely be having a donor for sure. Uh, probably late night. I, uh, I leave the next day uh, back for um, uh, Montreal, then eventually back. Whoop. Drop that right there. No uh, problem. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, leaving right back to uh, Toronto. But uh, I'll definitely be grabbing a Donaire. Maybe I see it, maybe I don't. But um, I, I've been to King of Donaires many times. I actually, when I did some, uh, some uh, what do you call it, promo stuff for the UFC and yeah. building up the UFC Halifax, I had uh, four Donaires. <laughs> wow. And last, <laughs> were <laughs> four Donaires? Yeah. We, us Greeks, we, we can eat, eh? Yeah. Well, they're essentially, they're essentially heroes, right? Yeah. I mean, like, uh, so, uh, the, 
it's in my DNA. I have to. <laughs> yeah. And last, last but not least, I can't believe I never asked because I'm a big music guy too. What music are you listening to before a fight or when you're at the gym? Like, what gets you pumped? What's the Elias Theodoru kind of soundtrack get you in yeah. in the mood? Because I'm, I'm sure different people have different songs. Some do the rap. Some people do the rock. What are you doing? I've done a little bit of both. Uh, fun fact, my first, like, eight fights, I actually came out to only Rage Against the Machine. Uh, oh, great band. A little bit of super sit, yes, for sure. Um, and great messaging behind it. Um, I obviously uh, kind of fell into the whole, uh, you know, uh, ritual slash um, – uh, superstition because I was going undefeated and I was like terrified to switch my songs. Uh, and then when I had, when I fought in uh, Ohio for the NAFFS uh, championship, they wanted to have a, an official soundtrack. So they only had a list of songs you could actually come out to. So, but I was like, uh, I always come out to Rage Against Machine. They're like, this list. And I was like, but I always come out to this thing. So eventually I picked it and I had to overcome. Uh, my actual superstition and I did. I picked up my opponent and slammed him for two rounds until I broke his sternum and became the double A uh, double uh, the NA double F S champ. Wow. So Rage Against Machine and uh, what and was, then what, my last my what last was that song? I came out to oh, all of them. All I come uh, the song that I came out to I have no idea. Uh, in uh, Ohio, but I've come out to uh, like, you know, a bunch of different ones. Calm like a bomb, uh, killing in the name of like again, I, I went through seven different songs. Um, last song is also another uh, track that is really dear to me. Uh, anyone that knows me knows uh, one of my favorite songs is Gangster's Paradise. Uh, yeah. It was my go-to karaoke. I'm a huge karaoke fan. So uh, uh, last fight I came out to it, it, it was my full dreads that kind of, uh, not dreads, uh, cornrows that kind of uh, put the perfect uh, icing on the cake with the song. And I might come out to that or I might come out to something else. I'm kind of still, you know, Feeling it as I go. That's awesome. We've had a lot of musicians on the show, and uh, we've had uh, Dave uh, Dave Backish. He plays in Sum Forty One, and I yep. know uh, a lot of uh, that. That's a band that you know. Um, there's not many bands that have crossed over from Canada in the states, and you know, with the American Pie soundtracks and all that, they have been doing a lot of things, and their music has been in a lot of. Um, different sports movies and sports soundtracks too. So it's it's always I want to incorporate more of the music and the athlete aspect of things because there's so much crossover. For sure, uh, Ajax finest, I believe. For sure, for sure. Well, this has been Pop Turner to the last. You know, I know you're a really busy guy, like you said, uh, but uh, thank you for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, bro. And uh, what? So where, where could we? Uh, so what do we need to know about the, about the fight? a little bit uh, of a USC work. We watch it. Um, yeah. uh, just in talk Canada, a little bit about that. Yep. Uh, what's it called in Canada, TSN, uh, like you said, I'm also a analyst for there. So double plug on that aspect. It'll be uh, Sam- Sunday, uh, not Saturday, uh, February 19th. Uh, I'll be on the main card because I am the M A N main event. Um, I her plus main event. Nonetheless, uh, with that being said, <laughs> Uh, a couple of shameless plugs. Uh, at Elias Theodore is where you can find me on inter- uh, on Instagram and obviously Twitter. I yep. am the Twitter goat of the UFC. <laughs> um, and uh, again, I, I run on. Uh, I am I I am you know successful based on many of the sponsors that that help me that fuel me. Whether it's Fuel Foods, HPN, Tribeca Finance, uh, and obviously many in between. Uh, Thank you for giving me this platform. Thank you for the opportunity to chat. And I'm looking for victory. And uh, I would love to jump back on again and talk more about all the other projects that I mentioned. For sure. And we could talk about how awesome it is to be Greek. Because mm. America, it, nonetheless. It's, it's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> all right. This has been Pop Turnative. Thank you, Elias. And also thanks to James Lynch, who unfortunately had to leave us early, but we thank him. And you could check him at uh, Lynch on Sports. And this has been Pop Turnative. You could watch uh, previous episodes of Pop Turnative on our YouTube page. And we're also audio only. Uh, we'll be on SoundCloud and iTunes as well. So all the best to Elias, Theodor- uh, the Spartan Theodoru in uh, UFC Halifax. And thank you all for watching. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. 
Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.